yapacağız. And I just started recording, so we may want to say that again at some point, just to make sure that we have it for the recording that we will be putting out. Are the, do the attendees have any specific questions? to you, you guys. Um, if that's okay, I'll just jump in. Uh, okay, so full disclosure, I'm going to sound really dumb right now, but I am almost positive that we are not part of cohort one and cohort two in Cape Elizabeth, but I'm not completely <laughs> positive because I'm so confused. We just started the public pre-K program um, this, this past school year. But our special education director sent out an email to us just recently asking our team to meet about FAPE. So I, and that's coming up. So I'm almost positive we are not part of cohort one and two, but I was hoping maybe we could get some, I think that that means I'm not, right? <laughs> no, well, you're not part of cohort one, but you are welcome to join cohort two. We have not officially started cohort two yet. And so um, that is definitely not, a, a, that is a question that most people are gonna be wondering is what is cohort two? So maybe I can just take a moment and explain that a little bit. Okay. So this is um, part of the law that went in, that is going into effect. August 9th, that will start the transition of special education for preschoolers, um, transitioning it from child development services to the public schools. And the state has four years to do that. So this year we are running a pilot program that we're, we've branded cohort one. And really, this is the year that we are working out all the questions that are coming up with this huge transition of services to SAUs um, in a landscape that has never had to do this before. So um, part of the governor's supplemental budget also has the school revolving renovation fund fiscal part in it. Okay. And so we have targeted this um, money, these funds for co uh, SAUs that are in cohort one or intending to be in cohort two. So that would be next school year. That would be 25, 26. Okay. So that would mean that we would have projects in mind that affect the preschool program for number one priorities, health and safety. Okay, got it. All right. right. Okay. So if you're a school district that um, is looking to join cohort two next year, you know, you've, as an admin team, you've been talking about it, mm -hmm. and, but know that you need some renovations that need to happen to make this um, that would fit under priority one that okay. would put you in a better position to start that 25 26 school year that is exactly what these funds are for gotcha okay perfect thanks so much for that And do you know where to find the application for that? Yes, I think I still have the link that took me, right? Oh, for the cohort two part, right? No, for the um, the school re revolving oh. renovation funds yes, application. I think I saw that link, I'll make sure. I'm gonna check, okay. right? I'm still in the session right now. It is in the priority notice and we can throw it in the chat. Jen, would you be able to do that? Okay. Perfect. 
Yes. Are there any other questions from our group, small group this afternoon? Yes, uh, Matt Gilbert, RSU 10, Rumford and Buckfield. Um, and thanks for holding this session, by the way. Um, is, as we look at what we're going to be doing with our pre-K and our CDS um, uh, and housing those, those programs, we have one. We have one brand new build that's going to be completed for the twenty-five, and in January of twenty-six. So we know we have space there, but we have in and that's in our Mount Valley region, which is Rumford. But in our Buckfield region, we would need to um, have projects to create space for CDS. We would need to complete projects in both the current elementary school, and find some space in the. Uh, high school to move a sixth grade from the we have a k6 building a pre-k6 building and a 712 building so we're, as we're looking at these options we're looking at the potential of moving sixth grade to have a six through uh 12 middle middle high school mm -hmm. can we use these funds in both those buildings to create those spaces or does it have to be dedicated just to the building that's receiving the cds programming It, it would be specific to the space, um, and Sandy, back me up from our previous discussions, specific to the space where the programs are going to take place. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I would agree with that. I, I know where you're going with that thought, Matt, that you're you're making space by moving classrooms. Yeah, yeah, but that's, we would need, yeah, we need to renovate classrooms to make them appropriate for CDS or or pre-K level students, plus we need to create a space. So mm -hmm. we're kind of, just, we're in, a, we're in a, it, an interesting situation with that, but okay, that helps. Yeah. Well, and we appreciate your thought process because you are definitely a district that is moving forward with supporting this transition. What's the, what's the timeline for applying for these funds? The applications are due October 31st. Thank you. And is there a timeline for the awards of those? Um, uh, yeah, our typical uh, cycle, um, once we get the applications, we have to do the ratings and the reviews, and we hope to make awards by January 31st of 2025. And that's the the I, we'd be identified a group or a school would be identified in January of 2025 and have to be up and operational before September of 2025. Correct? Not necessarily. Uh, just knowing that that would be a very tight timeline to make things happen. But the, this is also not um, an extensive pot of money, so it's not going to fund, you know, a huge project. So yeah. I would be thinking about things that would fit within priority one, but would also be supporting standing up preschool programs with the intention that you would be serving, starting to serve those students come school that year. I do understand what, what, where, what you're saying, though. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just want to make sure we get everybody's questions. Danielle, I see you're on here, but did you have any questions? I don't. I was just here to listen to some, some okay. information. Thank you, though, for making sure. Yep. 
Oh, one more quick question, Sandy. Uh, I'm just in keeping in mind. So basically, one of the projects could be renovating a space that we have in Cape Care. Cape Care is our partner for pre-K right now. So it'd be like renovating a space for services to be provided in that space. Is that, am I understanding that correctly? Is that a school district owned space? Uh, it's a town. That's the tricky part. It's a town owned building. And we're a one town concept, but um, that's what I, that's what I want to have clear in my mind. Where would we would we be thinking our our only school building would be our kindergarten area and we're out of space over there. Um, so that's what I was kind of thinking in my mind what it would look like. It would have to be for a school building that okay. the SAU owns. We wouldn't be renovating a space that you don't actually own. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks. Any other questions at this time? For the sake of the recording, Anne, could you share again what you said at the beginning? Sure. Okay. Um, for this special revolving renovation fund application cycle, all the normal rules and policies of the program apply. Um, the only difference this year is the restriction on who's eligible to apply. Um, so if you've accessed the program before, um, you'll be very familiar with the process. There's extensive information on the website, including the application and uh, estimated timeline and program details. Um, and when it comes to, to that part of it, I'm happy to field any questions even after this meeting is over. Yeah, so that would be another great piece if you have questions specific to the school revolving renovation funds. That is a tongue twister for sure. Um, please reach out to Ann Panette. If you have questions specific to uh, joining cohort two of the transition of special education for preschool students age three to five to public schools, please reach out to Jennifer Hopkins. And Jen, could you just share your email because it is not necessarily, it's a little bit different than just your name. And you're muted. Sorry about that. It's jennifer.l.hopkins at main.gov. And I put it in the chat as well. Okay. And we will be holding informational meetings on joining cohort two, we're hoping in September. So look for a, a priority notice or announcement about that. And Anne, is your email just anne.panette at main.gov? Yes, correct. Okay, great. Well, thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate it. It's a small group, but great questions. And please reach out if you have any other questions. Thanks so much for holding the session today. All right. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you.